Hi Year 7s and welcome to Maths class. Today we're looking at perimeter and uh, I know that we've already talked a little bit about units of length. So perimeter we have to remember is a distance so that means it's also a length and we use length units like meters, kilometers and centimeters. And perimeter is the distance around the outside of a shape. So if you imagine if you had let's say a garden that had a fence around it and you walked the length of that fence then that length is the perimeter. So it's easy to find perimeter. All we need to do is we need to add up all the sides. So we've got three sides on this example here. So I'm just going to write down P equals. And the only working that I really need to show is what are the things that I added to find the perimeter. So I added eight and 4.5 and 9.5 and that's going to get me the perimeter. So now I just have to do it. Whoops, I forgot to write plus there. There we go. Uh, so 4.5 and 9.5 is going to give me 14 plus two plus eight, sorry, is going to give me 22. And then I'm just going to check my diagram. It's in meters. So I write meters and all perimeter questions are that easy. Some of them are even easier. And you'll see why in a minute. Some of them are slightly harder because they have missing sides and we have to work out the missing sides. So let's go and look at a few examples. First one is a square. This is the easiest thing you could hope to have to do because basically the, the perimeter of a square is we just add up all the sides. But this side and this side and this side and this side are equal. So I can do it this way 2.3 plus 2.3 plus 2.3 plus 2.3 but what you can probably see is that that's actually the same as 4 times 2.3 so I'm going to do that calculation or you can do it this way and you might actually find that easier because some because for these numbers adding is actually pretty straightforward in fact I might even do that I'm going to think 2.3 plus 2.3 is going to give me 4.6 here and 4.6 here and then I add those together so 4.6 plus 4.6 is going to give me 9.2 check my units it's centimeters let's do another example and the next one is a rectangle so rectangles are kind of like squares and that we've got repeated sides but this time this side equals this side and this vertical side is the same as this vertical side I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to write down all the sides that I'm going to add up. I'm going to add up 12.3 plus 12.3 plus 7.1 plus 7.1. Another way to write that could have been 2 times 12.3 plus 7, not 7, 2 times 7.1. It's the same. It's exactly the same, just written in two different ways because 12.3 plus 12.3, of course, is the same as 2 times 12.3. So when I double 12.3 I get 24.6 and when I double 7.1 I get 14.2. Now I might need to do just a little bit of scribble working so I might just do it down here 24.6 plus 14.2 let's add them up 6 plus 2 is 8 keep my decimal point lined up 4 plus 4 is also 8 2 plus 1 is 3 so I get 38.8 and my units are millimeters so the perimeter of this this rectangle that means if I walk all the way from here over to this corner down to this corner over to here and then back up to here, I have walked a total of 38.8 millimeters. I must be an ant, I think. All right, I've got one more worked example. This one's slightly trickier. With questions like this, what I recommend you do is you tick the sides as you go because there are so many sides. And as you can see, not all of them are marked. And one of the most common mistakes I see here, people, most people know how to find the missing sides, but they accidentally miss some. So what I do is I start at one point and then I go up this line and that's my 18. And then I go along this line and that's my 15. 
Then from where I was up to, I keep going and that part is 10. Now, if I keep going here, I've got a missing side. So I need to work out what it is. Well, I can see that this length here is 25. And if I put the length that's missing and this 15 lined up next to each other, this 15 is the same as this dotted line here. So they add up to 25. So this missing side must be 25 minus 15. I would calculate this missing side by doing 25 minus 15, which is another 10. Okay, I'm up to here. You see how useful this method is? You just keep following each side. I've got another missing side. This 18 and this 10 will add up. Uh, sorry, will subtract to give me this missing side here, which will be eight. And then one last side is this one along here and it's 25. Now, once again, it's really important that you write this down in your working. Don't just try and add them up around the rectangle because your working shows the, the method that you used and it shows which numbers you added together. But now I don't need to show any working for the actual addition. You might need to do working to help you get the answer, right? You might want to do a column addition down here, but your teacher's not going to look at that. From here, your teacher's just going to check if you've got the right answer or not. But your teacher will be looking for this line of working. So I'm going to do this by pairing together easy numbers. So my 10 and my 10 make 20. And if I now add my 15, that makes 35. And if I add another 25, 35 plus 25 gives me 60. Now I add my 18, that gives me 78, plus another eight is gonna give me 86. And that might be worth just double checking by doing it twice, maybe in a slightly different order. Um, but I've got 86. Now, there is something else I wanna show you about this particular kind of an example. There's an, actually a slightly easier way to do this. What I'm gonna do is, using straight lines, I'm just gonna draw a shape. This is a big rectangle. Oops. And the side lengths of it are 18 and 25. Now, if I cross this line off here. I go to 15 here and I get rid of that and I redraw it just here. And then I get rid of that and redraw it just here where this bit is 10. This is a 10 here and this is a, a 10 also, right? Then what I'm doing is I'm making this shape up here. So in actual fact, an alternative way to calculate this is if I imagine that this is just been shifted to over here and this has just been shifted to up here, then this is also eight, then what I've actually just got is two times 25 plus two times 18, which gives me 50 plus 36, which does indeed give me the same answer as I had before, 86. So you've got two different methods there that you can use, but be careful with this because sometimes your cutout shapes might have diagonals and things that make things different. Remember your units and we're finished. So that's the little video on learning how to calculate perimeter.